This is section 2.5 on modeling direct variation. We have a couple of objectives for today. We want to be able to graph direct variation equations. We want to be able to write direct variation equations if I give you the values for x and y. And I also want you to be able to identify what is direct variation, whether you're given a graph, an equation, or a table. So in order to understand how to do all these tasks, we need to figure out what direct variation is. Direct variation equations are equations that look like this, okay, y equals ax. A can be any non-zero number. So basically, y equals some number times x. When you have an equation like this, uh, we say that y varies directly with x. Essentially, what this is, is it really looks like y equals mx plus b, but there is no b. Okay, there's nothing uh, that's being added or subtracted in this problem, and therefore the y-intercept, because b is the y-intercept, uh, therefore the y-intercept is zero. So this is the book's definition up top. My definition would be it's direct variation when a linear equation's y-intercept is zero. So the place where it crosses the y-axis is right at the origin. Uh, whatever the slope is, or the coefficient here, that value of a, is going to be called the constant of variation. So one of the tasks you guys need to be able to do is to identify when something is direct variation. And I'm going to give you different forms, and you guys have to tell me if it's direct variation or not. So if we are dealing with a graph, I give you a graph and I say, hey, does this, uh, is this direct variation? You just have to say, hey, does it pass through the origin? Of course, the origin, zero, zero, where it intersects, right? If the line goes through the origin, it is direct variation. From an equation, how you can identify if it is direct variation is to solve for y. If it looks like this, which is what we said direct variation is, then it would be, in fact, direct variation. So if when you solve for y, it looks like y equals some number and then x, it's direct variation. If it's got like a plus three in it, or it doesn't for some reason go into this form, it's not direct variation. And then from a table, what you're going to do is you're going to divide the output by its input. So if you're gonna be given a table, right, you have x's and y's, if you took the outputs and divided it by its input, so this number divided by this number, this number divided by this number, and so on, if it matches, it is direct variation, and whatever the number that you get out in that scenario would be its uh, constant of variation. So if you answer yes to any of these questions, uh, it is direct variation. So here is a fun little game. Uh, let's try to figure out if these things are direct variation or not. First up, let's look at these graphs. One of them is direct variation and one of them is not. If you guys remember, we have it up here from a graph. Does the graph pass through the origin? If it's yes, it's direct variation. That means this guy here is our direct variation example. Let's go ahead, we can pick this color. This one is direct variation. This one is not direct variation. Let's go from an equation next. We have a couple different equations. We actually have three of them. Uh, this one should be obviously direct variation. Y equals AX, right? A is the constant of variation. That's one half in this problem. So this one is direct variation. We have two other examples. Uh, if we solve them for y, we should see if it goes into y equals ax form. So this one here, y is not by itself. It has a plus 3. If I subtract 3 on both sides, I get y equals 2x. This is direct variation because it looks like y equals a times x. This one over here, though, would not be direct variation. If you were to solve for y, you'd subtract x and 1 to both sides. So you'd have y equals negative x minus 1. This is not direct variation because of this plus uh, or minus thing that we are adding or subtracting at the end. In this case, it's a minus 1. And then lastly, we are looking at 
from a table is a direct variation. And, and remember what I told you guys to do is to take the output and divide it by its input. Here you get negative three. Here you divide them, negative three. Divide them, negative three. Okay, every time we divide an output by its input, the y value by the x value, we get negative three. Therefore, it is direct variation. When we look at the second example, when you take the y value divided by the x value, here you get 1, here you get 1.5, here you get 5 thirds, 7 fourths. This is not direct variation, right? So not direct variation, not direct variation, and not direct variation, but the rest of those would be direct variation. So another type of question that we're going to ask is, uh, I give you a point like four negative six, and I say, hey, this is a direct variation example. Graph it and write an equation for it. Uh, this shouldn't be too bad. Uh, we know that it passes through the point four negative six. Four negative six is this point right here. By definition, remember that direct variation also has to go through the origin, or its y-intercept has to be at zero. So in order for me to graph it, I can just graph the point 4, negative 6, and 0, 0, and then connect them, and I've graphed it. So that's graphing them. Uh, we also are going to have to write the equation. Remember, direct variation means it can be written like y equals ax. Well, I don't know what a is. That's what I need to figure out, right? Uh, once I know what the a value is, I'm done. That's my constant of variation. I just write it in and I have my answer. To find the constant of variation, take the x value and plug it in for x, and the y value and plug it in for y and solve for a. That would give us negative 6 is equal to a times 4. I'm trying to solve for a here, so I'm going to divide both sides by 4 and get negative 6 over 4, which is negative 3 halves. So my equation is y equals negative 3 halves x, right? Once you have the a value, just plug it in, and you have your answer. So this is the equation, and that's the graph. You guys go ahead and pause it here. Do this one really quick. Make sure that you guys have the correct answer and a good understanding of this. What we would do is we'd take the point 5, 3. We know it goes to the origin. I've graphed it, pretty simple. We also know direct variation looks like y equals a times x. I can plug in the x and the y value. And I get an a value of 3 fifths. And that's my equation. I also ask a very similar question to the previous question, but I word it slightly different. Firstly, I say, hey, the variables x and y vary directly. We automatically know that means it's y equals ax. Write an equation that relates x and y given this is x and this is y. So we can simply plug in 3 for x and 12 for y, just like we did in the previous example. And we can write a direct variation equation. Divide by 3, divide by 3, 4 is equal to a. So our direct variation equation is y equals 4x. That's part a of this question, write an equation that relates x and y. Part b, then find the value of y when x is 5. Plug 5 in for x and figure out what y is. In this case, 20. I do want to let you know that sometimes I reverse this order. I say, then find the value of x when y is something. And you have to plug it in and solve for it. Go ahead and try this one. I'll wait a second so you can pause it, try it. We'll go over it together. Because it says direct variation, we know it's y equals ax. I'm going to use 9 for x and 3 for y. Divide both sides by 9, you get 3 ninths, which is 1 third. I am going to get the answer of 
people coming up with three here for A. That's, of course, incorrect, but it will be pretty common. Y equals one third X is my direct variation equation. That's going to be worth uh, part of the part of the points. And then it will say, then find the value of Y when X is four. So you're going to plug four in and you would get four times a third is just four thirds. So that would be the other part of your answer. So that's what I have for you guys today. Uh, be sure to let me know if you have any questions.